Welcome. What I want to do today is show you how to solve uh, this problem here. Now, what we're going to do is, you know, from the earliest times, if you remember dealing with fractions, um, the main important thing we always want to do is get rid of these fractions, right? I mean, it, it makes a lot of our problems more difficult than they have to be. So what I see here is I see I'm, being, I'm dividing by r squared and I'm dividing by r. And remember to eliminate fractions, the kind of like fraction buster some of you might have learned, is to multiply by your common denominator. Now your least common denominator is helpful because then you don't have to do less work. So I look at my denominator here and I can say the least common de denominator is going to be r squared because r squared divides into r squared as well as r divides into r squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply every single one of my terms by r squared. So I'm going to multiply here by r squared and everything by r squared. And the reason why I have to multiply everything times r squared is I have to produce equivalent equations. You know, if I say um, x equals 5, if I multiply by 2 on both sides, then I have 2x equals 10 which still, the value of x would still be 5, so I have equivalent equations. So it's just really important to make sure you multiply each one of my terms by r squared. Now remember, I'm multiplying by r squared. We can write a little 1 under that to let us remind us that it's actually in the numerator. And that's going to be very important because the reason, the whole reason why we did this is so we can cancel out or get rid of our denominator because r squared times 1 divided by 1 times r squared actually just goes to 1, right? What's r squared divided by r squared? It's 1. So it's not really right to say cancel out, but we, what we do is we transport to 1, which now will help us solve the problem. So this becomes 1. Again, r squared divided by r squared again is going to go to 1. So then I have 1 times, now be careful, negative 4r minus 8. That's a negative of this whole term, right? So I need to make sure I put it in parentheses. It's not negative 4r, it's negative 4r minus 8. So that's why I put it in parentheses. Equals, now r divides into r squared, r times, r times 1 is 1. So now I have a, um, a linear equation that I need to solve for. So I have 1 distributive property minus 4r plus 8 equals r. Now what I need to do is get my variable to go on the same side. So what I'm going to do is add a 4r. Since this side already has the variables on it, I'm going to get everything over there. So I'll add 4r by using the addition property of equality. That's going to go to 0. So I'm just left with 1 plus 0 plus 8, which is really just 1 plus 8 equals 5r. Combine these, I get 9 equals 5r. And then to undo what's happening, what being multiplied by my r, I'm going to divide by 5. So I get r is equal to 9 fifths. Now it's important that since I multiplied every single term by r squared, that I go back and check for extraneous solutions. Now for this video, I'm going to keep it very simple, and I don't want to spend time going through back and all, plugging all these in. But it's important for you to take your r and just plug it in for your, or take your value of r, plug it in, and just make sure that it's going to make your equation true so that it is a correct solution of your problem. Uh, I will show that with you in a couple other videos, but um, for this one, I just want to leave as an introductory for you, so I hope it helped you out. All right, thanks.